Okay, material. So how important it could be? Well, look at this image. There is not a single object in it without material. None. How about this one, you may ask? There's a chance you had experience when your custom material wasn't working and instead an in-game object looked like this. Well, it's actually material too. When the engine knows that your or any material is broken, it replaces it with default material. It's like a safety measure. So as we know how important material is, what is it exactly? Maybe texture is actually the same as material? Well, no. Texture is just one of many data we can input into material to make it to do something for us. So what is it then? Okay, so you probably know that verse coding is a list of instructions for the CPU. It executes them almost line by line with some exceptions. So material is actually a program or instructions list for our graphic card, or in short, GPU. Same as in verse, we have execution order and our GPU goes through each instruction. It grabs our inputs, which could be a single or multiple textures, numbers, colors, and more, then processes it and outputs the result to our screen. So if there are no instructions on what to do, the GPU won't do it. That's how important material is. Sometimes to create material, people need to write it in a pure code. For example, in HLSL or GLSL. But in the Unreal Engine, and likely in UFN, we can use nodes to do the same. Nodes actually contain code inside, and by connecting one node with another, we actually combine code into a full GPU program. In other words, it's called visual scripting. For example, we can add texture and the color node, then multiply them together and output the result to screen. Now let's talk about material function. To minimize a need to repeat the same work inside of a material, we can actually group nodes and later reuse them in any material we need that same functionality. Material functions are very useful to keep our material workflow modular and save a lot of time during production. What is even better is that we can create a library of material functions and reuse them in each project. Working with material functions is the same as any other nodes. We can add them together or, for example, multiply all depending how you prepare them to be used. Let's talk now about the difference between material and material instance. You can imagine it as the difference between server and client. So material does all the heavy lifting, while material instances are used to input different data to get different results. For example, inside material we created instructions to process and display color, roughness and metallic. Now we can create material instances and tweak these parameters. What is even better is that we can create material instances of the instance itself. This is very useful when we want to control multiple parameters and have them exactly the same between all instances and only, for example, change color in each of them. Imagine if we need multiple materials of the same reflectivity, but just different color. So create just a few materials and then work with material instances. Lastly, I want to touch on another very useful addition in our material workflow, which is material parameter collection or MPC in short. It's a collection of global parameters, which we can use in any or all our materials and control everything at once from that one parameter collection. Imagine if we have color information inside our MPC and we use that parameter in multiple materials. Now each time we change color inside our MPC, it will change color in all materials at once. This is very useful for stuff like global wind, seasons, weather, and much more. In UFN, it's even more useful as it's the only way to control stuff inside widget blueprints. We can add MPC into sequencer and animate parameters, which will then animate our widget. In my future videos, you will see me constantly using material instances, material functions, and material parameter collections. And now you will know why. This is one of my first videos covering basics, and more will come in the future. I hope this video is helpful to you. 
please press that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get notifications about future videos. See you soon!